Hi everyone! So I'm sure you've all heard about TED, which is that organization that produces TED Talks. Anyway, they have this YouTube channel called TED Ed, where every now and then they release these short videos describing some puzzle or riddle that you can try to solve. In this case, this one's called Can You Solve the Alien and Probe Riddle by Dan Finkel, which I'll link in the description. And they offer their own solution, but I have my solution that's different, and it's just really interesting to kind of compare the two. So let's talk about it. So here's the premise. You are given 27 wooden cubes that are all identical. They can all be separated, rotated, rearranged, reassembled in any which way possible. So again, this is not a Rubik's cube because with a Rubik's cube, you can't just pull out any pieces and like flip them or rotate them or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's 27 and we all know that 27 equals three times three times three. So it can always be reassembled into what I'm going to call the three, three cubed big cube. And I'll call the little cubes cubies just to avoid confusion. So anyway, you're given 27 of these identical wooden cubes and your task is to paint every cubie face either red, green, or purple. And once you finish that painting arrangement, it's set in stone. There's no more changing it. Can you paint these cubies in such a way that you can build together this big cube so that red is on the entire exterior and there's no other color showing? Then rearrange the cubies a little bit, and then green is on the exterior entirely and no other color is showing. And then you rearrange it for a, a third time, and then only purple is on the exterior and no other color is showing. The puzzle is, is this possible and how do you do it? So the first thing you'd probably think about to figure out if this is possible is just to count up how many faces we're working with. So if there are 27 cubies and each cubie has six faces, then we have a total of 162 cubie faces. Now let's think about the big cube as a whole. The big cube has six faces as well, but each face is made up of nine little cubies. So when the big cube is fully, like the exterior of the big cube is fully red, we have nine times six equals 54 exposed red faces. And obviously that's going to be the same for green and purple. So the number of QB faces we're, we will need to paint correctly is also 162. They match. And what this means is that we have no room to spare. Every single face needs to be used correctly, and if we make any mistakes, it's all over. So, how do you do it? Well, like I said, TED offered their own solution, and while it is a working solution, I sort of feel like it's a little complicated and arbitrary, and what I mean by that is if you were to, like if you had to memorize this for a test or something, it would be kind of hard to memorize, and you could easily, easily forget it and go wrong and get the wrong solution. So I want to offer you my sort of algorithm for producing a solution that is almost impossible to forget. And let's just do it right now. So imagine this is the cross section of the cube, like it's sitting on the table and you can see vertically like the Y dimension, you can see horizontally the X dimension and the Z is going like in and out of the screen, like forward and backward, but we just can't see that. So the first step, also let me just give myself a little more space here because it's kind of cramped. Um, the first step that Ted also does in their video is just splash the entire current exterior with red paint because you're going to have to have 54 faces painted red anyway, so you might as well get that over with first. Um, and like obviously this is happening in all three dimensions in the Z dimension as well, but I'm just simplifying here. So my, my algorithm is just this, take the top row or layer of cubies, there's nine of them, remember, and just cycle it down to the bottom. Take the leftmost layer of cubies, remember there's nine of them, and cycle them to the right side. And then in the third dimension, in the Z dimension, take the layer front layer of nine cubies and shift them to the back. And you can pretty much tell that all now all the exposed faces will no longer have paint. And so you might as well just splash them with green paint, like this. 
You could probably write a proof as to how you know that all the new ex exposed faces don't have red paint. Basically, what would it take for a cube to be splashed with green paint on the top face here? Well, it would have to be in such a place where originally before the cycling, it was this in the second row of cubies. And because it was in the second row, it obviously did not have red paint on the top face. So no face is going to be getting both red and green paint. And you can use the same proof for the left side, for the right side, and for the bottom side. So basically, we just know that um, red and green are not overlapping at all. And we have 54 exposed faces. So the algorithm is this. Um, for every dimension, and remember, we're in three dimensions right now, so there's three of them, left, right, up, down, front, back, just cycle all cubies one position over, and it loops over, obviously. So just repeating the algorithm again to figure out what you painted purple. So we're going to start with the Y dimension. Take the top layer of 9 cubies, bring it to the bottom. Take the left layer of 9 cubies, bring it to the right. And take the front layer of 9 cubies and bring it to the back. Now, with the same logic, the only cubies that have the top layer exposed now must have been in the third layer at the beginning. And if they're in the third layer, then they did not have green or red paint. So we know that these new faces are all unpainted as of now. and so we can splash the entire current exterior of the cube with purple paint and not have to worry about any overlap. And just like that, we're done. You can look at this right now and tell that you know all the sides of the squares that we can see have paint. And there's an equal amount of red, green, and purple. And at every stage along the way, only one color was on the outside. So yeah, I think this is a working solution. And the reason why I like it is because it generalizes really well. It generalizes. Writing takes a long time. Um, so I don't want to dig too hard into Ted's solution because later in the video, they actually admit that this is not the only solution and they actually link to this uh, uh, brilliant.org article which talks about how to find how many unique solutions there even are. So they're like at, out, outwardly saying that this is not the only one. But the reason why I don't like, okay, not that I don't like, the reason why maybe their solution is a little lacking is that you can't use any of the knowledge from this solution for other larger versions of this puzzle. So what if like you're given four to the third power equals 64 wooden cubes, and you're tasked with painting all of the faces red, green, purple, and yellow such that you can rearrange these cubies so that the entire exterior of the big cube is either all yellow, all red, all green, or all purple. If you use Ted's algorithm, you won't know what to do here. But if you use my algorithm, you just do this exact same thing here, just four times instead of three. This guy, this bad boy. So it works well for this, but not only does it work well for, I don't know, larger side lengths, um, the astute, astute of you might know what's coming up. Gosh, why is this, why am I running out of space? Sorry for all these delays. It also generalizes well to higher dimensions. So sadly, we live in a three-dimensional world, so it's hard to imagine what a four-dimensional cube would even look like. But, I mean, you can see that my algorithm worked on a 2D cube and a 3D cube. So you probably can just reason that it'll work in like 45D, 60. Like imagine somebody gave you 17 to the fifth 5D cubes and they said, um, oh, why does this eye look so weird? He said, please paint these um, 17 different colors. That seven looks weird as well. I don't want it look, looking like a two. 17 different colors such that we can arrange these little 5D cubes so the exterior of the big 17 to the fifth hypercube is one of those 17 colors only. Um, my algorithm would still work and I think that's pretty cool. Um, so I just wanted to share that 
I don't really have anything else to say. I think if you were to code this in a computer algorithm with, I don't know, Python or Java or whatever, it's just really simple because you're doing a lot of modular arithmetic, you know, n mod 3 equals equals 2 or something to determine if it's purple. And so the concept of dimensions and moving up to like five dimensional space is like really easy because now you're just, you just have like an array and you say like, um, if, if your coordinates in the array are like 0, 1, 3, 2, 1, 0 in six dimensions or something, uh, like the zeros just mean like you're painted red in these dimensions, you're painted green in these dimensions. I haven't actually ever implemented in code, so I don't really know about this, but it just, it, it translates really well to modular arithmetic and like coding it in something. And yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Okay. Thank you for watching my video. If I have any more thoughts, I'll put them in the comments. Goodbye.